Welcome to ChemHelp ASAP. In this video, we'll name simple alkanes and halo alkanes. For the most part, we will follow IUPAC nomenclature rules. As always, try to be aware if my style differs from your instructor. Remember that your instructor is the person evaluating you, so follow his or her lead, not mine. Go to the description of this video to find links to printable copies of these problems as well as printable solutions. This video also contains links to other videos that might help you with this material. Before we start the problems, let's look at some simple rules. There are really just, I, I think of three simple rules for these kinds of problems, um, alkanes and halo alkanes. Rule number one, we need to find the longest continuous carbon chain. This determines the base name of our molecule, like heptane or pentane. Step two, we're going to find the end of the chain, which end, there are two ends, which end is closest to a branch point. This is going to determine how we number the ends of our chain. Where do we start numbering? And then part number three, we simply add the substituents to our name. And when we add a substituent, we have to give a number for the position of that substituent as well as the, the name that indicates that we have a certain type of substituent. So that's it. Three, three easy rules to these, to these naming problems. So let's go ahead and see some molecules. Problem number one, our structure is in the upper left. So th this structure is drawn to make it pretty easy for us to identify what our longest chain is. Th that's not always going to be the case, and sometimes people draw them intentionally to trick you into picking the wrong chain. So you're not going to fall for that trick because you're now wise to it, but be careful when you pick out your longest chain. For this structure, we have a chain 5, 6, 7, 8, 8 carbons long. Now we need to pick out which, which end we're going to number from. So if we number it in the way that I already have, then we hit our first branch point, our first substituent, which is this single carbon group at, at position 3, at carbon 3. Now what if we reverse this? I'm going to change colors. What if we instead numbered from the other end, starting from the right? seven, eight. If we numbered from the right, we would hit our first branch point, our first substituent, at position four. Well, it's better to hit it at three. The, we want to hit our branch point as early as possible. So we're going to favor the black numbers, not the red numbers. So we know this, this is an eight carbon chain. It's going to be some kind of octane. We have two substituents, again following the, the black numbers. We have a single carbon that's a methyl group in the 3 position. And we have an ethyl group in the 5 position. Now when we put list our substituents in the name, we alphabetize them based on the, the first letter in their name. So E comes before M in methyl, even though ethyl is in the 5 position. So list them in alphabetical order, not numerical order. So we'll say 5 ethyl, 3 methyl, octane. And note that we use hyphens to separate numbers and letters, so that the dashes separate numbers and letters. And um, sometimes people want to stick a dash between the methyl and octane. There's no number. There are no numbers and letters to separate, so you don't put a dash there. It, those numbers just all run together. Almost always in these IUPAC names, the name is all one word. There are exceptions, but but not in this video because they only apply to certain functional groups. So that's great. That, that's our first problem. Let's go see another. Problem two. So here's a case where the chain is written to, to deceive you. So if we numbered from the left to the right, just written horizontally, which is kind of what your eye focuses upon. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven carbons. We can find a longer chain here. And in fact, our best chain is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine carbons long. So this is actually a no name. 
not a, a heptane, which is what we get if we focus just going straight left to right on the chain. So it, it's up to you to look at the chain and make sure you've really found the, the longest continuing, continuous carbon path. Now the way I've numbered it is actually the correct numbering because we encounter a branch point, a substituent, at position 3. And if we numbered it the other way, let's change our colors, we would go 1, 2, 3, 4. We hit our first branch point at 4. So we favor numbering so that we hit our first branch point as early as possible in the chain. So that's going to be a in the 3 position we have a methyl and in the 6 position again we're using those black numbers in the 6 position we have an ethyl so our name is going to we're going to alphabetize our substituents so we're going to start with the ethyl even though it has a higher number 6 ethyl 3 methyl no name and that's all one word. There's no space after methyl uh, as we go to no name. Don't try to sneak in a space. Just write them clearly as all one continuous word. And again, we have dashes between the numbers and the letters. Problem three. Now this is drawn so that we can just count off the carbons as we go from left to right or from right to left. I'm going to start numbering on the right because if we number on the right, we're going to hit a substituent at carbon 2 and if we numbered from the left we would actually we wouldn't hit our first substituent until carbon number 3 so this is the proper way to number this chain we and this is going to be a hexane in the 2 position we have a chlorine atom now you will, if you listen carefully to the way I talk about chlorine sometimes I'll say chloride and sometimes chloro chloride is properly speaking the anion that's Cl minus this is not Cl minus this is a chloro group off of a chain off of a molecule so this is 2 chloro um, and then the 4 position we have 4 methyl so now we list our substituents in front of our base name which is hexane and we're going to start with chloro because C comes before M so this is 2 chloro four methyl hexane and that is problem number three for this problem we have a new substituents we have we have fluorides these aren't fluorides they're not anions they are fluoro groups but let's look at our chain So this has seven carbons. It's in our longest chain. It is going to be some kind of heptane. Now, the way I've numbered it, we're going to hit our first substituent at position two, our first branch point at, at position two. That is better than if we numbered it the other way. I won't number the whole thing. Let's do some of them. That'd be one, two, three. Okay, so this is a little weird because you think, well, if we number from the other direction, yes, we, we, have to, we have to go deeper into the chain position three, but it's two substituents. Does two substituents at position three, does, is that more important than one substituent at position two? No, it is not. The, the substituent at position two still wins out. It's not the number of substituents. It's where you first encounter the substituent. So we're going to keep the black numbers, and that's going to be a two methyl. And for the fluoros, they're at position 5. Now we have to put, since there's two fluorines, we have to put two numbers. That's 5,5-di-4-methyl. Five, five, and that's our name. Now, when we alphabetize our substituents, the difluoro is alphabetized as an F. Even though the di is in there, the di is not the substituent. So this is an F and an M. It wouldn't, it wouldn't make a difference in this case because D comes before M as well, but we would alphabetize this as an F. You, you could imagine if we had an ethyl group in the chain, that would make a difference because E comes between D and F. So we start with our fluoro and we need 5,5-difluoro. Five, five, now notice because we need two numbers, 
we need something to separate the numbers. We use commas to separate numbers. So uh, don't use commas other places. Commas only go between numbers. So 5, 5, difluoro, two methyl, heptane. Again, that's all one word. There's no space between the methyl and heptane. There's no dash between the methyl and heptane because we only have letters together. We um, aren't separating numbers and letters at that position in the name. So there's problem number four. In this question, we run into kind of an interesting problem of how do we number. So let's just number from left to right, horizontally, the way it looks like the main chain is drawn. So that would give us a hexane. As it turns out, there is another way to number this and get a hexane. Four, five, six. So there's another hexane. So there are two paths. How do we choose which path? Well, if we number with the black numbers, then we're going to have two substituents off of the chain. We're going to have this three carbon group and a one carbon group. If we use the red numbers, we get a one carbon group there, a two carbon group there, and then that same one carbon group. So as it turns out, the rule is if there's more than one way to number the chain, you pick the numbering system that gives you the most number of branches. And what that does is it ensures that your, your branches are smaller and easier to name. So this is still going to be a hexane, but we're going to use the red numbers. So based on the red numbers, we have in this position, we have a 2-methyl. In the 3 position, we have a 2-carbon chain. That's an ethyl. And in the 4 position, we have another methyl. So these two are going to be combined as a 2 4 dimethyl for our name. Now, so we have a substituent, we have an ethyl substituent and methyl substituent. Ethyl is going to come first. So for our final name, 3-ethyl, 2,4, dimethyl, hexane. So we number so that we maximize our branches so the branches are smaller and easier to incorporate in the name. Problem number six. So we have a chain, and that's our correct numbering to give A the longest chain, a heptane, and to get our first branch point at, at as low a carbon as possible. So we have in the two position a methyl, and let's go to the five position. We have a chloro. But what in the world is this at the four position? This is a ring. This is a cyclopentyl group. For the cyclopentyl group, when we put these number, these substituents in our name, we're going to alphabetize this as a C. So the cyclopentyl is part of the name, and so we'll alphabetize it as a C. You might think, oh, it's, it's a cyclopentyl, we'll use P. But no, we use the cyclo prefix. So to alphabetize, chloro does come before cyclopentyl. CH comes before CY. So we'll start with 5-chloro, 4 cyclopentyl, 2-methyl, heptane. Now, that, that's a pretty long name, but the fact is if you just break it up into its parts and then stick the parts together, it's very manageable to name structures even as they get larger. So try to follow the steps, individualize the little pieces, and then just stick them together at the end for a quick name. Okay, th this molecule is a little weird. We, we don't really have this nice chain going across the screen. In fact, our only chain is really this single carbon. Well, we're not going to call this a methane. We're actually going to name this after the ring. And so this is a five-membered ring. This is a, a cyclopentane.
How do we number where the group is? Where do you start numbering in a ring? Well, we're going to start numbering where we get our first substituent on the ring. And so this carbon, by definition, will be carbon 1. Now, for this particular example, we're not going to write, oh, we have a methyl group in the 1 position. And we're not going to write that because since it's the only substituent, it must be at position 1. And one thing about IUPAC, they don't like redundancy. So if something's redundant, you don't include it. So instead, we're just going to say that this is methyl cyclopentane. Because if you draw a cyclopentane and then put a methyl group on it, that methyl will automatically be at position 1. So we don't have to specify the number. Now, if we had two substituents, we would have to include numbers. Because we'd have to say, well, where are the substituents relative to each other on the ring? And that's when we put in the numbers. But for one substituent, we can leave out the number. Well, what do you know? After the previous question, we now have a ring that has two substituents. So this is going to be, this is a six-membered ring. It's going to be some kind of cyclohexane. And now it's just a matter of deciding how we're going to number it. So either the methyl group is going to be position 1 or the bromine is going to be position 1. Well, well the, the, the bromine, the, the bromo group, B comes before M of methyl. So we're going to favor the bromo group being in position 2. And that means as we number around the ring, we want to number so that we hit the methyl group as soon as possible. So we'll, we'll go around the ring in, in this case, in a counterclockwise fashion, so we can hit the methyl group at 3. So this is going to be a 1-bromo, and we'll have a 3-methyl. So when we alphabetize our substituents, we get 1-bromo, 3-methyl cyclohexane. I hope you found this video helpful. Please subscribe, like, or leave a comment or question. If there are different kinds of questions you'd like to see or problems, then please uh, indicate that in the comment section. Thank you for watching, and remember that links to printable copies of these problems and solutions are in the video description. Take care.